Hey guys, what's up? It's Jason. Ian, thank you guys for watching, and we are here with our subscribers! Yeah! Three million! We hope you enjoy the video! Tell me about a religious experience of yours. Something profound. Something profound. I saw an angel once when I was like nine years old. Really? Yeah. We brought together seven Christians. I'm a Christian. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. I am Christian. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. One is a liar. If the group discovers who the liar is, they'll split a cash prize. If the liar survives, he or she wins the entire prize. Oh boy, okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Do you go to a church? <laughs> yes, I do. What That's a great question. Uh -huh. I, don't know, I don't know where to even start. I was going into it thinking about myself and how I present myself. I thought people would be like, oh, she's not a Christian. Hey, Chance, yes. tell me about a religious experience of yours. A religious experience of yeah, mine? Yeah, something I, profound. Something profound. I saw an angel once when I was like nine years old. Really? Yeah. What was that like? That was really cool. It was creepy, but like in the moment, like it was just like stillness and like really awesome. In the Bible, when they talk about what angels look like, it's a very scary looking picture. I was like, I don't know if I'd believe someone being happy to see a disfigured human being. I had a really similar experience when my father passed away. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to hear about what, it? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I, I know we have oh, a little, no. oh no. A lot. Okay. The speed round was pretty horrifying. I didn't even know what to ask. I didn't even know where to start. So much pressure. Don't worry, we're not watching. First person I trusted was Brandon. In the very beginning, him and I were talking, I was just like, all right, man, you and I, pack till the end. We're just gonna keep voting the same person. There has been a tie. Two people, Romy and Grace. <gasps> so, you guys vote again. Oh man, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys really messed up. I'm telling, I'm telling you right now. I'm feeling disappointed because I feel like I was based off my overall look. I didn't even say anything, I was voted off, you know? Grace was standing right next to me and she was really freaked out. She was just like, you know, I hope they don't think it's me because X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, then it's not Grace. I didn't think it was Romy either, but I just knew it wasn't Grace. I wanted to ask you, is your church queer friendly, LGBTQ friendly? Yes, actually there's two pastors and one is a biracial lesbian, so. Wow. Why did you choose a non-denominational church? This is, I mean, I was just born into it, so Bloody my dad's a pastor. Anyone else mm -hmm. a PK? Nope. No, I'm, I am. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. What's a PK? Pastor's uh, kid? Yeah, pastor's kid. Oh, pastor's kid. kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never even heard that. Yeah, they're usually the bad kids at your school, so. <laughs> <laughs> there's like certain terms I think a lot of people just know. I assumed his lack of knowledge meant he wasn't a Christian and he was trying to like pick up on things as we said them. How long have you been a uh, Lutheran? My whole life. Yeah? Yeah. I grew up in Scandia, Minnesota and like a big part of the town was the church. So okay. I was baptized there. Wow. Do you go to a church? Yeah, I go to this one out in Riverside. I just started going there about two months ago now. Because I, I grew up going to more of like a, a strict church and then I kind of branched away from it and then went back. What do you mean a strict church? So I grew up Mormon. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's strict, it's strict. You know, I kind of had to take my own path mm -hmm. and figure out what worked best for me. I've definitely, I've stepped away from church because it's hard for me to find uh, a church, especially a Baptist church that's accepting of the queer community, so yeah. I stopped going. Are you f looking for something? Or are you Not just kind actively. Of Halfway through my answer, I realized I probably shouldn't have said that. Because everyone else was like, oh yeah, they all actively go to church, and I was the only one like, I don't go to church now. And that's when I thought, maybe I should have kept that to myself. Well, when I switched churches, like people were taking it beyond judging, and were making it, like they were like condemning me. Can you read that? I have really bad handwriting. He mentioned that he hadn't been to church in over three years, and I was just like, okay. I felt like his story about being a PK and coming in and out of his faith could have been an alibi. He wanted to hear everyone else talk, like he kept asking them questions, like he didn't want to talk about his own experience. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> so, I think a good question would be like, how would you find your faith? 
Mm. All right. So I was actually an atheist before I was Christian. Like I was a hardcore atheist. And I was like super depressed. Like I was like burdened by like my own life, I'd say. And then coming into a life where like you're just kind of getting abundantly filled up with like love from other people and from God especially. So what made me go back into church, what really like pushed me is I had a really bad breakup. And it was like at this moment where I was at work and I watched this kid die because I, I work in the ER. So watching the kid die and the family kind of go through those emotions of like trying to let go, I was like, man, like there's got to be something like that can, you know, make me feel full and make me feel whole. I believe that there, there has to be this higher power and otherwise the ego takes us over and God allows me to realize that there's, there's more than just me. As an artist, I think there's messages coming to me that I'm supposed to communicate through my art. The way I grew up, I was really into church. It was my safe space. I had a hard, uh, hard home life and it was where I felt like I could be myself. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I was gay and that was really hard. And then I took a step back and then have come back to it as an adult. It's been a struggle, um, but something that I want to have. Um, I am a PK, so I was just born into it. It was like summer after fourth grade, my parents got divorced. And so I was kind of like straying away, you know, and especially divorce in the church is like a huge thing. So that was really hard, but I feel like that whole situation kind of like solidified my relationship just so I knew, you know, there was always someone there for me and my church was there for me too, you know? I have no idea who I'm gonna vote for. <laughs> <laughs> I follow you, man. Yeah. She's a PK, like she knows exactly how to answer, like knows the perfect part to play. In the back, she kind of mentioned her stance on premarital sex. So that kind of like was like a red flag. Okay. Bye, Grace. Bye. 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 See you later. <laughs> you had a good question, right? Yeah. You said so okay. you you were talking about how like you kind of express yourself through art. Like I wanted to just, like just have you elaborate on that. When he mentioned art as like his his form of everything, I was just like, ah, it doesn't really make too much sense. Cool. Well, like one thing I love about the church is I love to sing. Okay. And um, growing up, I like my best memories of church were just singing in the choir. And when I moved out here, one of the hardest things was not having a church. I think that like through my voice, through the hymns and everything, that's, that's the biggest thing. We were just talking about this, how a lot of the people that go to my church have had similar backgrounds to me, which is they've been hurt by the church. Maybe a song like, Oh How He Loves Us, in the past was great for you, and then you were hurt by the church. Having those memories attached can actually make worship really hard. There was this song that like was a big song in my church, the Mormon church growing up. Uh, it, it was like, it's called, I want to say like families uh, can be together forever. Man, like my parents, they got divorced. You know, and since that time, like I can't even like listen, can't even look at the lyrics of that song. Yeah. So, what about you? How was like your experience kind of moving across the states and then? So hard. I grew up in a town of like 500 people. And so the church was everything. Mm -hmm. And coming out here, and starting that hunt for one that's like LGBTQ friendly and the right kind of like chemistry of people and the right kind of sermons. And I started looking and actually hearing about yours. I'm kind of like, wait a minute. Give but, me the info. Yeah. <laughs> I'm be shook if one of these people are the moles. What? Hi guys. Wow. Raise your hand if you think the mole is still in the square. If the lights turn green, you voted the liar out. If the lights turn red, the liar's still in the box and you lose. My mind's gonna oh, blow if they go red, dude. Cause I'm gonna feel really down. It's so crazy. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm the mole. Ah, dang it! <laughs> hey, you know what? I did vote for him. I did I vote was gonna, for him. I was, yeah. <laughs> I felt betrayed a little bit. I definitely was kind of feeling Andrew was like a Christian for sure. I was shocked because Andrew, he talks like a lot of the youth pastors at my church, you know? Because I'm gay, if anyone else was gay, I like wanted to be their friend. And I was like, oh, he's my friend. I'm not going to vote for him because I really believe him. And then I was wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah!
Ah! Oh my gosh. I really became an atheist right after I got baptized. I think when I got baptized, I thought something magical would happen and nothing did and nothing changed and I still felt really hated by the church. The things that brought them into the church and into the religion were things that I found on my own without religion. Personal experience, I think, is huge in the way that we experience religion. I would say that a lot of times we look at Christianity as like a monolithic kind of thing and that everyone does the same thing. You know, even like if you say the word evangelical, that usually means one thing, but that's not, that doesn't usually represent all Christians. Even the word Christian barely represents all Christians. I feel relieved that that is over, but I also feel a lot of love and compassion from that group of people. I was kind of worried how this would go, but I realized that these were all really good people today. They're all amazing. I got a question for you. So was there a time in your life where you had a judgment about someone where you turned out to be like completely like flat wrong? I think that's like probably every other month, every year. I think we'd all be a lot the better if we were honest yeah, about that. Because yeah. we're always making an assumptions and letting our bias come into play. And you but don't know you have that bias on, until you get to the other side, right? Until you step outside of yourself and ask like, well, why did I feel that way? Mm. And I thought this show would help us like explore that mm. and how our biases can come into conflict with the, the truth. Stick around for the other episodes, they're coming soon. And uh, follow us on Instagram. We have a lot of exclusive content there, um, some behind the scenes things. And otherwise, comment below, tell us what you thought, and we'll see you around. Bye, guys.